Well, greetings. God bless each and every one of you. Pastor Murray here. I am the senior pastor of the Fellowship of Love Churches of God in Christ. We're one church serving in two locations in the city of Savannah, Georgia, as well in the city of Hinesville, Georgia. I'm excited to come to you to bring you another installment, or actually it is only the second installment of A Moment in Truth. Truth in and of itself is sometimes very difficult to digest or embrace, especially when it comes to us. John chapter 17, verse 17 says, Jesus says, sanctify them through thy truth for thy word is thy truth. And what we're needing more than anything now, not opinions, not philosophies, we need the truth of the word of God. And that truth is to be set apart from all the other voices that we're hearing throughout the media, CNN, MSNBC, uh, all the other outlets that we are hearing different news and different instructions pertaining to the coronavirus, the COVID-19. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 23, I think it is, there are many voices um, in the world and none of them are without signification. And I interpret that as to be there are many voices talking about the same thing and all of them have relevance and significance. But what is it that God is saying to us from a pastoral standpoint? I want to know what it is God is speaking directly to me concerning the responsibilities and the assignment that God has given to me concerning the people that I serve. Solomon, one of the wisest men in the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 23, he says uh, that we should uh, be diligent to know the state or the condition of our flock and to look well into thy herds. And when I think about that, uh, when I consider uh, the statement that President Trump made on this week about the reopening of the churches and I'm hearing all the different responses from the pastors and different ones on social media. It just lets me know that we are not on the same level or we are not, uh, we have different opinions of uh, about the reopening of the church. My perspective on this is, as I've stated from the very beginning of this COVID virus, I want to know God's voice for myself. I want to have an inner witness. I have certainly been praying and petitioning God to let me know when the time is right. As we look at the members of our churches, when we look at different age groups, when we look at the different facets of our churches, we have to make decisions based upon the things that we know about the people that we serve. And of course, one of the things that we are concerned about is the elderly. Of course, we know that they are most vulnerable to this virus and we have to be able to make wise decisions based upon um, this virus and when we are to reopen the church. You know, the truth in and of itself, you know, it is uh, debated uh, from various areas, various perspectives. Some are saying, I'm going in, I'm gathering. There's nothing wrong with that as long as we are in compliance with the laws of the land, as long as we have been led by the Spirit of God and not ourselves. And I think one of the reasons why it was hard for us, many of us, to uh, embrace and digest the instructions that the president is given because we know that he's not one that embraces the truth himself. It's very hard for him to uh, embrace uh, the truth as it relates to him. And so uh, when it comes to the church and him giving us or telling us it's time to go back to church, uh, it's hard for us to uh, receive that and digest that. Now, if the truth be told, there are some pastors that has already resumed their services with certain restrictions in mind, and there's nothing wrong with that. Here in the state of Georgia, there are people still being infected by the virus. People are still dying. And so we want to be very, very careful about our re-entry into the sanctuary. Now, of course, another thing that the president made reference to is that the governors have deemed, according to the CDC, 
our liquor stores, abortion clinics as essential and has left out churches. Of course, we know as people of God, people of faith, that the church has always been essential. And even though the doors have been closed, we still have been having church because the church is not confined to the building in and of itself. I thank God for the freedom of worship wherever I'm at, even if, if, even if I'm driving in my car. It does not matter. You can have church wherever and whenever you want to have church. The church is in us. And so the decisions that we were made concerning reopening our buildings to go back into the sanctuary where we are to enter in with thanksgiving, enter to his gates with praise, enter to his courts with praise and through his gates with thanksgivings. We are thankful for the opportunity uh, that has been given to us, given us the freedom to go back into the sanctuary, but yet we're going to go, we feel like the Lord is leading us back into the sanctuary. Lastly, I would say this as we are approaching the day of Pentecost, it is my hope and it is my desire that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit himself, would speak to us and give us specific directions that we will have such an inner witness about our re-entry into the church that we won't be so conscious of uh, the virus that we will be able to freely give God praise and give him worship, give him the glory that is due to his name without being stagged or uh, without being um, fearful in our minds are so worried that something is going to happen that we're not free we, we don't have the freedom to give him all the worship that is due to his name you know i thank god for how god has sustained our ministry as well as many other ministries but the truth be told there may be some ministries that may not be able to resume back to the church and so uh, with that being said you know we have to yet pray and and uh, Ask God to strengthen those individuals that may not have a church to go back to. I don't know. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the light. And the scripture says, in all our ways we are to acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. I want to say one last thing that I'm very sensitive about. Those of you that know me uh, know that I'm very, very uh, particular about um, the uh, reputation of the church, that we should be people of character, that we should protect our names, that we should do um, what the Lord has called us to do as men and women of God without any hidden agendas, without uh, another motive, without having a personal agenda. And so as it is hard for us to receive instructions from the president because he is the president, even though he had a right to say what he said, even though what he said was truthful. Sometimes it's the same way with leaders. You have the right to say what you said, what you saying is truthful, but it's hard sometimes for others to embrace what you saying because, the, because of the way you live your life. I say to each and every one of us today as leaders, let's live our way, our lives uh, in a way that is so pleasing to God, that, that is so tuned in to what God is saying to us without having any other agendas so that those that are listening to us will be inclined to believe and to embrace what we are saying. This is Dr. Larry S. Murray coming to you again with another moment of truth. God bless you.